Hey there, Mission Control. Well, today we're going to do our first walkthrough for the Real Martian Challenge. So let's jump right in. Okay, well, one of the very first things we have to do in order to have a successful challenge is we got to solve the fungus problem. So in our previous videos, we've talked about all the experimentation we've been doing. Things are looking pretty good. We have these new trays that are coming in or that are in uh, for the microgreens. Uh, but we got to make sure that all works. Otherwise, the plants that we put into the aquaponic beds um, they ain't gonna grow. So getting this fungus problem solved is top priority right now and I, I, I think we're gonna make it. I'm definitely gonna have to use my notes for this next section because there's simply way too much for me to remember even for a quick shot. So uh, the next thing that we have to do is figure out all the plants that we want to put in. Now this is the real Martian. We're gonna experiment. There's gonna be things that other people have tried and failed but we want to see what happens uh, in our system which uh, has some uniqueness in it. So some of these things are gonna be kind of interesting. Uh, some of them will be more traditional. But first, I uh, kind of go over the first two beds. This is one bed, this is another bed. Each bed is 12 feet long by four feet wide. That's roughly three meters by one meter, um, roughly. And the first two beds on each lane are gonna be uh, lit like this. So you see the light coming in there. Now in this particular bed, we're gonna have kale, Swiss chard, Kale and Swiss chard, yep, and different types of lettuce. They'll all be in here. In this bed, we're gonna have arugula and butter lettuce and probably some other lettuce seeds that we have that we'll play around with. The upper shelves on all these are not gonna be operational for this challenge. Hopefully by August, we'll, we'll probably move these shelves up and we'll have something growing here. Maybe we'll put another one of, the, um, of those grow tables here and actually move the lettuce up into this and have some higher stature plants here. Now these can all still be moved. I put service loops into the electrical wire here so we can actually adjust these shells if we want. Um, but for the Martian Challenge 1801, we're just gonna stick with the stuff growing down here and not worry about anything up top on this lane. Now we're on lane two. Lane two has the microgreens up top. This is production and production will continue during the Real Martian Challenge 1801. Um, TRMC, I think I'm just gonna call it TRMC from right now or 1801, whatever for short. Um, we have lower section here, we're going to have green beans and we're going to try garlic. Some garlic that actually comes in in time, so we're going to try that. And then on uh, bed two down here, um, it'll have microgreens up top going, but we're actually going to put broccoli and cauliflower in here. Those, those have we've tried before and they seem to grow, uh, so I'm hopeful that we'll be good there. Um, oh. At the very end, the very, very end, all the way down here, in the last bed, we're actually gonna have kiwis. Uh, they'll trellis, and based on my understanding of kiwis, uh, they probably won't be ripe in time for the May challenge, but they might be for the August challenge. And uh, I think I'm also gonna drop a pineapple down in here. They have a small bush pineapple, but I wanna cover these uh, uh, posts up and a viney uh, plant like a kiwi is a great way to go. Not to mention I have a sweet tooth and I need something that uh, has some sugar in it. Okay, so speaking of fruit, uh, we're gonna see how we can fit these all in here. But we're gonna have a, this is the area where we'll have the split system, meaning we'll use aquaponic water and actually feed uh, items that are outside of the aquaponic system uh, we're going to have a small clementine tree right here, a small grapefruit tree right here. These are dwarfs. A dwarf almond tree, a dwarf banana tree, a dwarf peach tree. Uh, and I think I even have an apple tree, but I think I might have one too many trees in there uh, that will go in this area here. So I'm really excited to get those in. We'll see how they do. Um, the dwarf varieties, they don't get really much taller than me. Um, so I'm five foot eight, so you know five to six feet, and not much bigger. And it all depends on how you trim them. Uh, we don't want them to get too much bigger because you'll get shading over here on this side. But there's the uh, plan for the middle. Now the trees that I bought, um, they're going to be larger trees. They're showing up. We're not starting with little small ones. We got the bigger ones coming. Uh, I'm very confident that we can grow them. Uh, we're going to have really good conditions in here for these. So. Uh, we'll see if my confidence is well placed. Now on lane three, uh, oh, and on those trees, 
they, they fruit in the first year. We'll see. That's what, that's what the sellers say. We'll, we'll see if the sellers are, are selling me a bill of goods or not, but uh, let's move on to lane three. Lane three has four beds in it and it gets a lot more light than uh, lanes two and one because lanes two and one are on the south side of the building, lanes three and four are on the north. So when the sun is up for summertime and, and early spring, like what we're gonna be, you're gonna, or late spring, you're gonna have a lot of natural light coming in here. So we get to play around with these beds even though they don't have artificial lights on them yet. So on the lower bed here, uh, we're gonna move these racks up and we're gonna put uh, watermelon and cantaloupe in this one. We're gonna do strawberries in this one. This will have microgreens on it. And then on the lower side, we're gonna have onions, carrots, green onions. Now we have grown uh, carrots in our first aquaponic system with lava rock, and it actually grew and it pushed everything out of the way. Uh, so we'll see uh, how well it does here. And that very first bed all the way up there have microgreens up top and you can't call yourself the real Martian and not plant potatoes. So we're gonna have some Yukon Golds and some baby red tomato or uh, potatoes up there. Now, uh, same thing with the carrots is one of the people say that, you know, in their experience is that root vegetables don't grow all that well in um, artificial dirt, you know, in these media beds like what we have. And we don't need these to get big. We really just need quantity uh, but if you have a potato like that big, that's what we get from the market right now anyway. So that's totally acceptable. We're not talking about a big old honker baker, you know. So uh, if we can get these things to grow the way that we want, uh, I should be sitting pretty, pretty nice. But uh, I think one of the things will make us different than others in this case is that we're actually going to share with you the results of growing these root vegetables in the media bed so you can actually see it. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of results that really capture what type of watering were you doing, what type of media did you use, how did it look at the end. You kind of get shots like, it'll never work, it failed. Uh, but I want to know the details, you know, I want to know what was your pH, what was your humidity like, what, what was uh, your watering regimen, what did that look like. With our new valve system that we're putting in, we're going to control the amount of water that each one of these beds get and each one of them can be different. So like with potatoes, it doesn't need more than an inch of water per week. That's gotta get translated in the media bed, but essentially maybe we only water it uh, all the way up to its roots once uh, a week and maybe um, like once a day, just putting a little bit of water into the grow bed so that through evaporation, it's moist in that environment. We'll see. We gotta play with those things and we're gonna share it with all you guys. On to lane four. This one's going to be fun. So these racks are going to get refactored, but you got a lot of sun. Remember the sun right now sits about this angle in the horizon and come May, it'll be up about here. So you're going to get a lot more penetration of natural light over on this side for corn. Going to put some sweet corn in here. Uh, the upper rack here will be removed. Actually, both the racks here have got to go so you can fit the corn in. So uh, these racks can be repurposed somewhere else probably for lettuce growing using that uh, floating uh, raft system that we've talked about, a uh, hybrid system there. So in this bed here, we're also gonna do corn, so corn and corn. In this bed here, uh, we're gonna start, we're gonna have medicinals, so we're gonna have echinacea, chamomile, and lavender. Uh, and then we're also gonna have, uh, moving out of medicinals, uh, basil uh, will be here, a lot of basil. And then in, in bed one up here, we're gonna have oregano, thyme, sage, chive, cilantro, and parsley. So with all that, we should have the food that I'm gonna need uh, for the challenge. And <clears throat> you're gonna get to see some cool experiments. So I, I'm kinda, I think, I don't think all of it's gonna come in. I. I actually think it's probably going to grow. I think everything is going to grow. I'm just worried about it taking longer to grow than we have time for. Now, a majority of these things have a, uh, uh, a time to maturation that is um, well within what we have to do. It's, it's currently February, May is in three months. If we get next week, everything's supposed to show up here 
we get everything started, get it in the ground, uh, in the beds, excuse me, uh, and we should be pretty good. So we got to move all these, kind of refactor some of these uh, shelves uh, for the growing exercise on lane three and four. Lane one and two are pretty much set. Uh, but otherwise, for the growing stuff, we're, we're pretty much set. Oh, we got to get the valves in. Valves show up this week as well, so we'll get those valves put in. This walkthrough, I'm actually using you guys uh, here as I walk through, kind of talk through all the stuff that I need to do. So forgive me, uh, this isn't scripted. Uh, we're just, we're actually literally doing a walkthrough. So I, I think what I'm going to do, uh, this is my work table and all my spare parts and tools and all that. We need to get this all cleaned up. And I, I think what I, I'm going to string a uh, methane line down here uh, from the digester and set up my cook area here. So open flame as far away from the digester as possible. Uh, though I'm not really worried about that at all. Uh, the digester is safe. So let's see here, methane line to west. And then we'll set up a cooktop here. We need a cooktop. Um, and then my cot as well. This will be my kind of sleeping area, cooking area right here uh, is what we'll do. So clean that all up. And I need a little eating table. I don't really want to use the uh, microgreen tables and stuff for this. Uh, so yeah, like a eating table, like a, Mrs. Martian always wanted one of those little, uh, you know, like table and the chair set. I forget what it's called. Uh, but anyway, we'll get one of those. So this will be the living quarters for the RMC 1801. Okay, right now in the system we have about 50 fish left. Now when we first bought fish we had about 100, 170 of them I think, but a lot of them are really small. Um, we killed the majority of them through death by pump. Uh, we also had the big power outage last summer uh, where we were able to harvest uh, just in time, but we lost quite a few there. So we're actually going to be bringing in more trout before the challenge. Uh, so they'll be established in the system. And then uh, fishing gear is definitely going to have to be part of what I have here. So I need some fishing gear uh, so I can uh, get the fish out of there and uh, cook them all up. Now all their guts and everything, you need fish uh, gutting area. I don't really want to get the microgreen area dirty again. So we're going to need something there to... Uh, do that. Maybe I do that outside. Probably, probably be the safe thing to do. Uh, and then all the guts and everything going in the digester. So, gonna have more fish coming. Uh, about 170 fish total uh, to get the system going again fully with all the fish. Need to do that. We talked about it in a previous video, but backup power is going to be important. Now I could use the digester biogas generator. I think that's like my go-to for May, uh, but there's also a non-zero chance that I could uh, get, um, what is it, uh, the Tesla Model S, its battery bank is the same thing that's used in the power wall, and I could essentially buy one for I think $1,500 and it's four kilowatt hours of energy uh, power, and I can mount it somewhere right in here on this wall, uh, and that could be my backup power source that also becomes the emergency power for the entire building, uh, which is a good idea uh, there. Or I can mount it up at the front of the building, but I really, I really like the idea of a backup battery power uh, solution and installation so we can really um, you know, keep the system running even if the power goes out. Uh, I think that's a good idea no matter what, so we're really gonna give that one serious thought. So, it's a walkthrough, remember. Uh, food, okay, so here's the game plan with food. Uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna be eating lots of smoothies. So I have to have a blender. Blender takes power. Uh, for breakfast, I got three breakfasts that I have to go through, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so I'm thinking probably like microgreen uh, sun, or, uh, smoothies, Hopefully those fruit come in. Uh, if not, it's gonna be lots of green stuff. Uh, I'll be very regular when it's all done, if that's the case. Uh, lunch, 
I really like the idea of smoked trout, so I'm hoping you guys think that the smoker's okay, but I'm guessing you probably will say no, uh, which means we'll have lots of cooked trout. But we got lots of salad making, so carrot, kale, onion, arugula, lettuces, uh, they can all go into a nice salad for lunch. Uh, lunch is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Dinner, uh, this challenge starts Thursday night when I get off work. So I get a full three days, three nights. So Thursday night, I'm thinking like a roasted trout with potatoes. Friday, roasted trout with corn on the cob. And Saturday, like a trout soup uh, with sliced carrots, onions, and Swiss chard in it or something like that. Mrs. Martian is actually fully engaged on taking these Mr. Martian recipes and turning them into something that's actually amazing and fantastic. Uh, we just have to have uh, all of our plants come in in order to make that happen. So the pressure's on, but like I said, next week they should all come in. So we talked about power. I gotta have all my electronics out here, my, my laptop, um, probably have an MP3 player and uh, or maybe not, I don't really need one of those. Laptop and video gear, that's the most important stuff. Uh, probably some books to read, huh? Reading materials. Comments from users, or subscribers. You're crazy. Uh, heat, we talked about. Cooking, we talked about. I'll wash the dishes up in the sink. We're gonna need soaps and all those things, so soap. Actually have soap out here that's digester safe, so we'll probably just use that. Toilet, so I'm gonna go up to the house, take a shower up there, but no toilets out here. Toothbrush, toothpaste, gotta to have underwear, socks, overalls, shorts, flip-flops, laptop, Kindle, pillow, cot, some digital movies. Fishing line, hook net, a pot, a pan, fillet knife, fork, spoon, blender, washcloth, biodegradable soap, first aid kit, sunglasses, because they're probably bright, Bible and sunscreen hat. All the tools gotta be out here, so I gotta go through my tools list still. What tools? And of course, we gotta have all the plants here. Big, big, big thing. Camera gear, gonna have that. Said I think putting in some uh, 1080p cameras in the building to see stuff would be a good idea, regardless. What else we got? Okay. There's our walkthrough. I can't think of anything else at this time. No. Is there anything? I mean, what am I missing here? I mean, it's not like it's too crazy, so. Climbing gear, have our climbing gear so we can go do projects and stuff. I gotta think of what projects I'm gonna do while I'm out here, cause I am gonna work. <clears throat> and I need to be working out. Gotta get rid of this thing, because there's a very good chance that this totally tanks, and I get to fast for three days, which will be the first time I've ever fasted. So uh, that'll be exciting in ways that I have yet to think of being exciting. Uh, I think that's it. That is it. Okay, so uh, if you guys are thinking of anything else here with this walkthrough, please uh, help me out. Some of you have volunteered to help with Mission Control. You can see I have a lot of planning to do still. I've got a lot done, but I uh, really want to think through everything uh, here and uh, make this demo as realistic as possible. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian, out.